Let me introduce myself. I'm Anna. I like to be known as Anna T. Trained as a fashion designer in Los Angeles. But uh, I founded Mother and Child Project. That's a project, the idea that I want to share with you all tonight. But my journey actually started way back. I was born into a garment manufacturing family in Hong Kong. But at a very young age, I was actually sexually abused um, by my private tutor, which my parents engaged to teach two little girls English. By the age of 13, I actually had my first nervous breakdown. And subsequently, um, I was mentally ill until the age of 35. Now, at the age of 19, I met a Singaporean in a disco in Hong Kong. And for some reason, he just decided he wanted to marry me. And we succeeded, I mean, he succeeded in uh, getting me to say yes. And in 1987, I came to Singapore. And it was amazing because it is in Singapore that I kind of met, I met God. And uh, I found a cure, miraculous healing to my illness. And that begins my journey to start because when I was really sick, and uh, because I was introverted, I actually attempted serious suicide, but for some reason I didn't die. And I promised myself if I was able to overcome whatever I'm supposed to overcome, I am gonna make a lot of difference to a lot of women for the rest of my life. And in 1998, that's what I started, I was asked to start a second hand shop for uh, a group of mentally ill ladies uh, who belongs to the early road care center at that time. And because of starting this uh, social enterprise, um, I came across a lot of donors who are willing to give us really good items, right? And what I, this began a journey where this big idea came to me was that for Singapore, because we don't have natural resources. Now, if I want to start a business and make it sustainable, the minute I buy any raw material, my cost goes up. Now, if I, my social uh, object was to help these women, I want to pay them well so that it makes sense for them to work, right? So this is the beginning of a journey of this idea that I have to share with you today. Now, subsequently, I set up 1999 together with two ex-drug offenders, Purusha Arts and Frame, um, basically to produce frame, you know, do framing for pictures and artwork. And Purusha Gifts was kind of like a marketing army setup. We thought that we put all these items into a hamper and we can market it. Right? In Singapore, everybody loves to buy hampers to give to their friends or, you know, at official opening. Now, but in 2004, the, this, this was a major breakthrough for me was I was asked to set up another something old, something new at a crisis shelter run by the Singapore Anglican Community Services at that time. And I started the Mother and Child Project. It was to, because of a group of single mothers who cannot go out to work because of the young kids and they're usually abused wives and mothers. So I taught them to sew and then I would sell their, whatever I taught them and to raise money for them. So this is how Mother and Child Project begins. So these are primarily the people we help, they're single mothers and they want to work at home because when I was working and helping the extract offenders, I found that a lot of them were actually uh, kids from single parent home, usually the mother who has to work outside and they are left alone. And so eventually they fell into like bad company and become you know, drug pushers, you know, gangsters. Now I also extend this to women recovering from psychiatric illness because when they're on medication, it's very hard for them to work outside. Now also, because of the economic crisis that happened in 2008, now I have another group of ladies who need to work at home to supplement their income because their husband lost their job. Uh, recently, I was asked to take on retirees. So now in my project, I have retirees working who are unsupported. All right, and all these people are referred to me by social worker who are on the cases 
and from different service centers across Singapore. Now, how do we help them? Is that I provide the training. I also have volunteers who provide them training. Now, and I try to design product that match the skill. So they have various different skills sets. And how we kept the cost low was because remember, I used donated items. I you know, uh, and then I pay them above market rates so that you know they have good income for the amount of work they put in. The next thing that I want to show you was how I design or how we design these products. Now, we use donated item and then we create a big product that you all want to buy. So let me show you what we have. Because basically I have three product lines because I tell myself I don't want to create junk because it's a charity. People buy it because, you know, <laughs> they feel sorry for you. So I set out on the left is this our paperweight that is created from an old pair of jeans that is donated to us and an old shirt, men's shirt. Now the second item was actually uh, multifunctional. It is a blanket as well as a cushion, right? And it's made use of fabric that is donated to us by an upholstery shop. The third item is actually fabric donated to us by IKEA that we make into a food carrier. And these, you can find it on our internet portal. You can buy on in the internet. Next, I'll show you another design. It's gift and home furnishing. Um, I stumbled across this idea. This is an icon of Singapore. These are called Sumshay Women. From that pair of old jeans, I actually created also this door stopper. But this has become our signature, the best seller of all time. Now, this is a door stopper. Now, the Samsung women are actually single women who left their hometown in Samsung in China that came to Singapore in 1940s. And they work on construction site, and this is the uniform that they wear, right? And I kind of thought that, wow, this really represent the spirit of the mother and child project. Even though these women were abandoned and you know they're left to fend for themselves, but because of the spirit, right? And they, they want to take care of their children and they try to make a living. There's a sole breadwinner, you know, and all the money that they make they send back to support their family back in China. And of course this is the the center one is actually a magnet created for the same range. On the left is a toy as well as a blanket as well as a cushion. The next uh, line that we have for people who, you know, generally when they start, they don't have very good sewing skill. But that's my goal, to train them so that they can eventually sew like clothing that I wore, you know, and these clothing here are multifunctional and they have different skills, right? The, of course, the captain is the easiest to sew. Uh, the one on your left is actually uh, medium difficulty, but the one in the middle is actually the hardest to sew. So out of my core group of mothers, uh, maybe four of them can produce this kind of work. Now, I'm going to uh, invite one of my volunteers who's actually a speech therapist uh, working at one of the local hospitals to demonstrate this design for you all because the idea is that for women who travel, they don't want to bring a lot of clothes, right? Uh, one jacket, but you, and it's made of use of different donated fabric, but you can have many, many different wares out of it and you can come up with even more. We discovered that there are 10 different ways that we can wear this jacket. Now, John C. Uh, John C. Conception is actually a prime time member. Now, one of the way that uh, I make the, this project sustainable is that we allow women's club to adopt our project, and they provide support. They provide um, all kinds of different skills and you know ideas to the project. Now, let's uh, let's take a look how this jacket. Uh, this is another very sellable item for us, you know, one of the money-making uh, design that we have. All right, now she can wear it like this, she can wear it, belt it up. All right, now this jacket can be worn upside down. 
So she's going to demonstrate to you how this can be done. So she's going to walk, take it out and move it upside down. Now, put your hands here. Yes. Of course, for colder countries, you can wear it wrapped up. I wish Jerry had one of my jackets. <laughs> now, ah, you can fold it down. You fold it down. Now it becomes a collar, short jacket. All right. Besides that, she can wear it inside out. And now we're going to ask her to demonstrate wearing it as a skirt. Now it can be worn as a dress, but this was a discovery by one of the customer who actually told, you know, one day she called me up, you know what, guess what, I found out that I can wear your jacket as a dress. And anyway, <laughs> so you can use a, you know, sleeve arm and tie it, you know. The way we sustain this project is that we make the volunteer work fun, you know, so that they get all excited. Okay, Bala, this is a skirt. <laughs> Thank you, Jesse. Thank you. So, how we mar market our product? Oh, we also have the accessory line, and the accessory line is created because some of the women cannot really sew very well. And the reason is we sewing involves the coordination of your hands, eyes, and actually the control is in, you know, by your foot. Um, the accessory line is basically using your hands and your eyes, all right? Now, then how do we market all these products? We actually have fashion show. We have people who, as their CSR project, you know, clubs, they have fashion show, then they, we, we lend them our clothes and then we sell them. Um, we sell it on the online shop as well as there are right now three boutiques that carry our product in Singapore. And one is Peace of Mind, Donkey Doodle, as well as Simply Living. And we also sell at fairs. We only go when people are invited and give us a free table. So this was one event at 101010, you know, the uh, Bottle Tree Park Fair. And the lady next to me is actually the president of Prime Time. All right, Christy. The next was this testimonial by one of the beneficiary of our project. She joined us uh, early on, was referred to us, uh, and unfortunately, uh, she actually she could have worked outside because she has an autistic son and she's a sole breadwinner. But she really, this is her own, she wrote this and she said that uh, not only the project provide for her financially, but it inspire her, you know, she, because she could use her skill, her creativity, and of course she's one of the sewers who can sew clothes. And this is the big idea, I want to recap once more. Um, for countries like Singapore who have no natural resources, our capital is us, you know, the people. Um, how we do is, you can go, and get donations of goods, unwanted goods, something or something new, because you know, a lot of items that donate to, to us are brand new, all right? And what you do is uh, create these donated items and make it into uh, products that people want to pay and buy, you know, and market it on the world stage through internet, through whatever ways. And um, I hope that uh, people can adopt and spread this idea because it can be done. Thank you.